now we're going to switch uh, to English because we have Christy Schweinsberg from uh, Words Out of the Top. How are you, Christy? Hi, Javier. I'm very well. Thank, thank you. Very, you. Thank you for uh, for taking the time to talk with us about um, last week. We we gave the uh, the general results of the JD Power and Associated Missile Quality Study, but then I I I, I saw your posting uh, on uh, on your take your personal take on, on the study, and it was very interesting and uh, very catchy headline says why I didn't take any service after I bought my new car, <laughs> and just with that yeah. I was like I was hooked. <laughs> So tell me a little bit about, I mean, like, give me a, a short answer to that, that question. Oh, I didn't take any surveys. Okay, so <laughs> I, I leased a, a Chevrolet Volt last September. Um, I love my car. Uh, and, and right away when I was at the dealership, I was told by my salesman that I was going to be getting a survey and would I please fill it out and mark basically excellent answers for every question. Because oh, was, I didn't wait, 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 wait. He was telling you what, what you should put for an answer? Yes, he was telling me how to answer the survey, yes, oh because the issue is that the dealership... Like, that sounds like elections in Miami for public, <laughs> for public office. Uh, apparently this is very common in the industry. It's not just Chevy dealers. It's every dealer that gets these surveys, or, or these surveys are sent to customers by the manufacturer asking them, asking car buyers to grade their dealer and the car buying experience. And apparently they judge the dealers very harshly if excellent answers are marked for each question. So he said even if I said I was somewhat satisfied, that wouldn't be good enough that he would get in trouble. So um, so I did receive the survey and I thought, you know what, I, if I'm going to take the time to do a survey, I want to be able to answer it truthfully and I'm not going to answer the way somebody wants me to answer and I'm not going to take the survey. So I didn't take the survey. Um, yeah, that sounds that sounds like uh, the whole process then is a little bit tainted. I mean, I, I wouldn't trust the results then of uh, of like when they announce all these results, like this brand or whatever model is, whatever rated by this or or whatever other survey there is out there. I mean, that sounds like to me that it's not very truthful information for the consumer after all. No, no, and I mean, I think the survey that I take at the dealership, I, I don't know that that's put out into the public. Sphere. I think that that might just be for the manufacturer, but certainly it calls into question other surveys um, like JD Power IQS, like JD Power Vehicle Dependability Study, like surveys from Auto Pacific and surveys from Consumer Reports because you know you're you're getting a certain group of people. First of all, these surveys are very long. Um, I know. This year's JD Power IQS, 233 questions. So. There aren't a whole lot of people that are going to set aside time to do that. I was told last week by Dave Sargent from JD Power that it takes 40 minutes. This year's IQS, IQS yeah, survey takes 40 minutes. After you take a master's in Harvard in psychology or something like that, right? <laughs> yes, yes. So who are the types of people that are going to answer these surveys and, and turn them in? You know, I, I just, I, I question that, and then I also question, um, you know, they're being asked with IQS to remember back to the first 90 days of car ownership. I mean, if, if you had just purchased your car when the survey came, or, or say it was, it was, you know, you purchased your car three months before the survey came, well, then it wouldn't be that difficult. But if you purchased your car a year ago, and, and you and I both know how the manufacturers are doing the model years now, that there are already 14 model year cars out now, and we're still... 15 already, which is crazy. Yeah. And we're still six months to a year away from from the actual calendar years. So, who can remember back that far? You know, and who can? I mean, you might include a problem that actually wasn't in the first 90 days, but are they going to really double check? I, I don't think so. Um, they're not going to ask you for proof of that. Um, and and then you know, different people interpret problems differently. So, for instance, I talked about in my blog that when I purchased my Volt, um, the there was an airbag light that was on indicating the passenger airbag wasn't working. Um, I can't remember if it was actually not working or if it was just the light was malfunctioning. But anyway, I took it to the dealership. They fixed it. I didn't think it was a big deal. You know, it was it was a very minor issue for me. Um, I had another thing where I had a switch replaced. The volume switch on my steering wheel was was malfunctioning. Again, a very minor. I took it. It was no big deal to me. Um, some other people, they might really be upset about those two issues, and they might, and that might really skewer. You yeah, know, they I, might say I'd say that the whole car is uh, it's uh, really bad, and like, um, and the dealership experience is bad. Also, I mean, and, and that that's the thing with not, now everything. The experience at the dealership has become such an important thing for manufacturers because 
basically everything is luxury now. I mean, Starbucks is luxury to me, you know? <laughs> so when you go and yeah. buy any car that, and for example, I was driving last week um, the Nissan Versa, which is it's kind of Versa Note, uh, that is going to start under 20 and has everything. I mean, like GPS, Bluetooth, you name it, everything. Keyless start. I mean, that's a luxury car already for $20,000. I mean, if you compare it to a car from five, ten years ago. So, I mean, the experience has to be perfect in every sense, right? Right. I mean, customer service is, is very important, and, and certainly the manufacturers want to be sure that the dealers are treating customers well. Of course, the dealers are not owned by the manufacturers or independent businessmen, but they do try to exert a certain, the manufacturers try to exert a certain amount of control over the process of car buying. And, you know, they want, you know, the magazines to be up to date and they want, you know, a certain TV station on and they want espresso machines. And, um, <laughs> yes, it's, it's certainly, um, I'm not, I'm not saying all surveys are bad. I think these surveys, they, they do serve a purpose, but I, I, I guess I would, say people should use them as a guide not as their main decision making tool i mean i mean don't go out and buy a porsche because Judy power says you know porsche scores number one in iqs i think yeah. you need to always drive a test you always need to test drive a vehicle spend some time with it um you know some people they don't learn stuff until after they've owned the vehicle so it really behooves the customer to spend some time with that vehicle and and you know sit in it like for instance my mother um she owns a uh previous generation chevy malibu and one thing she realized right away was that she wouldn't be able to use an atm comfortably because the belt line is so high mm. on the chevy malibu that you can't reach out the window to the atm you have to open the door and sit on the edge of the seat you know i mean there are all these little things that people may not consider and yeah just just don't base your whole buying decision on what consumer reports says or what jd power says or even what ward auto says you know you need to really you need to do yeah you know, spend time in the car yeah we're talking to christy schweinsberg from a wordsauto.com and we're talking about how uh, how to use the information from uh, surveys and all these studies i mean there's so much information about every single car every single manufacturer on the web now i think i read uh, recently a report that uh, the average consumer who who checks the internet for a new car like visits like 18 web pages which that can be very confusing right so um, it can be yeah so I mean that, that that's the thing. What you just said it like you have to spend time in the car and and I and 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 see how it feels to you because as you mentioned, uh, one little detail can make a huge difference. It can, and then one thing that um, Dave Sargent from JD Power was saying last week when they announced the results here in Detroit was that people really they, they beat themselves up for a lot of things when they buy a car. And they find an issue, and it's an issue because this year in IQS, and well, it has been a trend for recent years as well. A lot of a lot of problems people were reporting were not malfunctions, but it was just um, a, a certain way something was designed, um, especially like with the infotainment systems in cars. And so people get really angry at themselves for making that buying decision. You know, so yeah, especially with all the technology in cars nowadays, you really got to spend some time with these vehicles. And, yeah, and, and, and uh, I sometimes it takes more. I mean, like we usually here in the media when we get like uh, cars to test from the manufacturer, we spend them maybe a week in them, and and you don't really learn everything that it's in a car. As I was mentioning with the Versa Note last week, I mean that car for being so so not expensive like under twenty thousand, it has everything. I mean, you you won't spend like maybe a month or two before you learn everything, right? Oh, for sure, for sure. In my car as well. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I, I still don't know about. You know what what the center stack does and all the functions there. Um, yeah, and, 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 and sorry for interruption, but especially with the, that kind of elect, the electric cars, I mean, there's a learning curve also on how to drive and how much energy, I mean, how much range you're going to get out of the full charge battery and all those things, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. In the Volt, there's a little bouncing ball, the little green ball, and you're supposed to keep it in the center and spinning with the leaves, and that means you're driving it most efficiently and then if it goes if it turns yellow that means you're driving it you know, in an inefficient manner and um there, there is a lot to learn I, I know it can be daunting for people i mean you and i are in the auto industry and, and we understand this stuff a little bit better than than the average american car buyer um but, but really it, it it does benefit you to learn this stuff and to um and to get familiar with that vehicle before you you make that purchase because you know you're going to have this car probably for for years yeah. you know it's not like a it's not like a smartphone where 
every year you get a new one. Yeah. You know, like a car purchase is more of a long-term purchase. Absolutely. Christy Schweinsberg from uh, Auto, you know, wordsauto.com. Christy, where can people um, find more about what you write on, uh, on, on words? So that's the, the, the web page, right? Wordsauto.com? Wardauto.com, yes. Um, yep, we're on the web. Uh, we update every single day. Um, all of our reviews are public reviews, and a lot of our news stories are public as well. Some stuff is behind a paywall, but we got a lot of stuff that's, that's available to the public and a lot of good stuff there. Okay, thank you very much, Christy, and uh, hope to see you soon. Uh, I'm going to Detroit uh, in, uh, in the next few days to visit Ford Chrysler, so maybe I'll see you there and say hello in person. Okay, sounds thank good, Javier. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Uh, ahí estaba Christy Schweinsberg de wordsauto.com hablando sobre cómo es que debemos eh, eh, estudiar y recibir la información que sale publicada en todos estos estudios que nos hablan de, de la calidad inicial de los autos, eh, de cómo los fabricantes eh, están eh, dando información sobre la experiencia en los con concesionarios y cómo esto en realidad afecta a los consumidores. No hay que tomar esto como la única verdad, hay que averiguar un poco más y sobre todo hacer un test drive visitando los concesionarios. No se vayan que cuando regresamos aquí en Auto 060 vamos a hablar del nuevo récord Guinness de Volkswagen TDI por 48 estados de Estados Unidos. Esto es Auto 060, yo soy Javier Moto.